All right. What's up, everybody? Another Wednesday night, Hellabass Live with the one and only Seth Fighter. What's up, Seth? What's happening? Man, it's good. I don't know. We got some, like we were just talking a little bit. We got some weird weather, like probably not as weird and dangerous as the stuff they got in Kentucky last week, but like there's some some goofy stuff happening outside right now. Yeah. I've never seen it in Minnesota. A bunch of lightning so if, just went through and chance of tornado in December. Yeah, so so if, if one of us goes dark, we probably lost power or internet or something. So yeah, could happen. <laughs> Because we only live like, I don't know, 10, 15 miles from each other. So, yeah, not far. So, if if one of us goes down, it's probably going to be both of us. So, <clears throat> probably. But, uh, all right. Let's see here. We got a bunch of people coming in. Uh, let's see, uh, Critical Gravy, Jay, Brian, lots of guys in here. Darius, people are stoked. Uh, lots of people are excited in here. Unfortunately, we, uh, we don't can't see like on this screen <laughs> the custom emojis, but, uh, uh this one there's there's a llama for you so uh a lot of people are excited there you go patty says the amazing fighter man aoi he says he's got a whole he's got a whole group watching you at his place nice did you crush some taco bell tonight uh it's it's more of a reusable cup there's there's some uh, some cracking with some diet dox pepper in here gotcha Got some, some Facebook people as well as the uh, the YouTube. So nice, cool. All right. I feel like the chat's going to be uh, spicy tonight and hard to keep up with. So this is somebody asked this in the, the pre show. I mean, do you do you do you know what a llama makes? Do you have a, when, do you ever impersonate a llama and versus just? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like they're kind of like a maybe a little bit of a sheep fish sound kind of like a man and then some spitting noises I, I don't i can't say for sure i haven't actually spent a lot of time with llamas but i would assume that's kind of the sounds they make maybe i'm wrong yeah i feel like it's i, I think maybe one time i live i saw you make a noise like an animal noise but it was like in the heat of the moment type thing not really like a reversed yeah. nice Lots of congratulations. Some Minnesota people, some people from all over. Um, I guess one thing I want to, just before we get into this, just want to make sure we uh, we thank Arsenal Fishing for supporting the channel and the stream. Uh, appreciate them. Um, so take care of kind of the house business here. So I guess one of the questions is that I had is... Uh, like how many bags of Bosch shotgun shells did you go through this fall? Um, I bet you I shot maybe. Well, their cases are two hundred shells. I probably shot two cases. Nice. So fair amount. And that and then I got like kind of cleanse. That's like a palate cleanser between fishing. Yeah, and- yeah. A little refresh, reset. Um. I think it's my favorite thing to do. Hard to say, but um, mm-hmm. I, I enjoy the hell out of it, and it's nice to take a break from fishing and do some hunting with the boys, and then uh, you know, kind of restart for the next year. Yeah. Any anything? Any shoot anything cool? Was it like the standard stuff? Did you get any like banded birds or any any cool stories from this season or? uh nothing crazy uh we got one banded mallard i didn't personally shoot it um that was it for bands we don't shoot a lot of i don't goose hunt much so we don't get a whole Uh lot of bands and then uh nothing real crazy no just a couple good teal hunts right away a couple good wood duck shoots early and then handful of decent mallard hunts in minnesota and then we went out west and uh beat up on them pretty good and you know that was kind of a good fix for me but as far as minnesota waterfall season goes i would say it was one of the worst Mm. for me personally in the last you know maybe 10 years since i've been like really hunting hard you know do you think that's just because we didn't get the cold weather early enough or yeah a lot a lot's to do with that i think our season got shortened this year by over a week i believe so that didn't help um warmer than average weather and then lack of water um i don't know maybe i just didn't make 
the right moves. I don't know. Like when I like when the water's high and there's like a lot of flooded stuff. Sure. Um, this year, I bet you a lot of our birds kind of use bigger lakes to roost on more so than you know flooded out sheet water stuff. So um, I like- maybe maybe I just suck. I don't know. But I, I had a less <laughs> less than better year, and it seemed like the the one we did get one little push of birds kind of right before the end, and they only seemed to stay around for like. Like, I don't hunt on the weekends, and so I basically start scouting on Monday and then try to find stuff for the week, and I found a lot of birds. I think mm-hmm. it was, like, second to last Monday of the season, and I tried to set up on them Tuesday, and they were about all gone. Like, I just, I think they blew in Sunday, and they are pretty much gone by Tuesday morning. So mm-hmm. I think the one good push we had didn't stay around very long, and I don't know. That kind of sounds like my fall fishing where I really like to like force that jig dock hardwood, like, you know, that shallow flipping bite. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if it was just, I was on the wrong, li- like I missed it everywhere I went. I feel like, I mean, I caught like a lot of two, three pounders, but I just yeah. never got into like the fours and fives on that shallow jig deal. I think the low water had a lot to do with <laughs> yeah. it. A lot of the, you know, good shallow bank cover was extremely shallow this fall, you know, maybe I mean, it's still enough water for a bass to be on there, but not the, you know, nice two, three foot of water when the big girls get on it. A lot of it was, you know, a foot of water and you can still catch fish in that. But yeah, I experienced the same thing too. The the real mm-hmm. shallow bite kind of sucked. Well, that, ball. and I feel like the green grass hung around way later. Like I went to some lakes, like even like Marion and Lakeville and stuff, oh, which yeah. is not my favorite lake, but like I was out there in like late late october and there was like almost topped out green milfoil still which i feel like that much you know i think part of what makes that shallow hardcover bite so good is when the grass drops they're like yeah i want to go there i want to stay shallow but there was so much grass i think that just spread them out too much so yeah i agree yeah this is one of the questions i had is like so obviously you made the boat switch to ballistic this year from from a bass cat like obviously you got a full year now like what were what were some of your big takeaways what what was like the big differences for you in the ballistic um i I, it was a lot bigger boat than a bass cat i I think it still fished a lot like a bass cat real maneuverable Mm -hmm. that's the one thing i loved about a bass cat like especially lakes like minnetonka where you're going in and out of the docks like this the whole time they're super maneuverable boat up front um the trolling motor is set back in like a normal position which took me i tried to get as far forward as i could well because once you fish out a basket for a while you really get used to like being on the perch of the boat you know what i mean you are on the tip of the boat you don't have to worry about hitting anything when you're roll casting or back in and so um i i the, the way the boat comes like it's set back so i ended up ramming the pedal as far forward as i could and making a little block behind it to get it get me as close to the front of the boat as i could so that took a little mm-hmm. bit of getting used to but I'm, I'm with it now um ride was amazing um i don't want to bash anybody but it was probably the it was the first year i haven't had a sore back nice um okay. i was really excited about that um seats are super comfortable in it big boat a lot of storage and uh it, it's got that bass cat speed so i didn't really mm-hmm. lose anything there i was I was pretty happy about that. I was, and I know every boat's different. And even the baskets I had, every one of them, one would run 78, one would run 74. It's just motors and weights of boats. And none of them yeah. are all identical the same. I, I thought I was going to get a little more speed out of my ballistic, but I think I, I might have just had maybe a little slower one. I was still running, you know, 75 fully loaded, two guys, which is good. And that's a true, like, I don't BS my speeds or anything. Everybody. Like you talk to everyone, they seem to like it's kind of like your wiener size or something. They want to like <laughs> lie about how fast their boat goes, you know? It's like, yeah, oh, yeah my boat does 77 loaded. And it's like, why did I pass you going 74.5 if it right. goes 77, you know? Yeah. And maybe so, in perfect conditions that you never see, but like, you know. Yeah. No, I'm talking real life, turn yeah. every day, two dudes loaded. And I pack my boat to the gills. I mean, there's yeah. no room in it. So, um, you know, I, I thought I was going to get a little more speed out of it, but it could have just been the boat. So maybe the next one will be a little faster. I know uh, um, the guys that trick them out get crazy speeds out of them, but they're not running, you know, true tournament load. And, you know, they got one rod and two bags of worms in there. Like, yeah. And talk about how their boat goes 
80 tw- 24 miles an hour yeah, <laughs> yeah. Boat, like not yeah. like <laughs> yeah no not anchors, per, not like, real life yeah yeah are you getting a new boat for this year or are you run the same one back to back or um it's a great question um maybe <laughs> maybe yeah i think i'll have a haul here in about two weeks and may or may not have a motor for it so, so the motor so you're gonna, gonna be you're, the hang up for me <laughs> you're not selling the old one until the new one's ready no, <laughs> no still got it in the garage yeah it's it's definitely not going anywhere until uh we got a new merc hanging on the back of the new one nice matt wants to know what you're sipping on tonight uh, uh actually pretty boring just a, a fresca there you go i'm, I'm out of do and that's what my wife drinks so that's what so, we got Somebody asked, uh, Lightner wanted me to ask you, why always warm Mountain Dew? Uh, it's just one of those things in life. It, I think if you get used to drinking cold Mountain Dew, if you had a warm one, you'd be disappointed. So if it's always just room temperature, then it's never like, oh, I have to get ice to keep my hmm. Mountain Dew cold. You know, I just, I don't ever put ice in my boat unless I'm like summertime smallmouth fishing and that's just for the fish, not for me. And those those new boats do have coolers in them, so they do. I, I put my Mountain mm-hmm. Dews in there. I just don't put ice in there. <laughs> nice. I don't know. I, I like mine chilled. It doesn't have to be ice cold, but I, I need it a little bit chilled. Yeah, I don't mind it cold. I'm just not gonna go out of your way. Yeah, I mean, it's just one more thing you got to do. Cool. Uh, let's see. So many chats. Oh, look who showed up. Banger's here. What's up, Banger? Oh, what's up, Bankston? He's probably selling boats right now. You got a motor laying around there I can borrow? <laughs> you might have like a Suzuki or something. Or... <laughs> yeah, how many, how many hours did you put on your... Do you know how many hours you put on your boat last year? Like, what do you average? Uh, pretty light comparatively this year. I didn't do a whole lot of idling. Um, I'm usually in that two to 300 hour range. I think I was closer to the 200 hour range this year. But um, like I said, I didn't um, idle near as much as I normally do. Not a lot of ledge tournaments where you got to like, yeah. spend a whole week graphing. And... Yeah. And you're, you're a little bit more. I mean, you do definitely graph, use electronics, but you're also a little bit you probably err a little more on the side of being an intuitive kind of fish the moment kind of guy. So you probably don't graph as, I mean, cause you hear other guys that a lot of other pros, depending on like guy like Austin Felix, he's probably more three to 400 <laughs> hours. Oh yeah. Under, yeah. Probably, probably more. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of something I, I used to graph a lot more, but now that's all anyone does, you know? Right. Everybody's side scanning and then live scoping or mega live and everything like, and just kind of going against the trend, really. For sure. Got Kent in here. Good old Cade. See, he was out catching bass today. Yeah, so he got Cade got <laughs> smallmouth today on the river. It's like 32.3 yeah. degree water or something. I didn't even know water got that cold. <laughs> Without freezing? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever, do you, you don't ice fish anymore, do you? Or have you? No, I absolutely hate it. I go once every three to four years just to remind myself how much I dislike it. Yeah. I haven't done it since college. Um, I just said, like, somewhere along the, the way, I lost my gear and I have no interest in like going and buying an auger and yeah. some two foot poles and like a Vexlar. And like, I, if somebody wanted to call me and be like, hey, you know, drive out to the shack, they're biting, I would probably do that. But other than that, yeah about it so i have had fun like if you get like a group of guys and put out a bunch of tip-ups sure. and just pike fish and get the grill going and drink some beers yeah, it's like tailgating nice, on nice ice. day yeah <laughs> that's fun but like taking it serious is just i'm way too impatient like i drop it down jig it one time and like i want to move like but that's like a whole ordeal yeah here's a good like a mental question what do you do to keep positive like when a day starts out and like I mean, I think there's definitely probably some days this year where you didn't have squat in the box at, you know, 11, noon, whatever. Like, what, what's, what's, what do you tell yourself or how do you stay in the game? Uh, 
just knowing, even though you don't know that it, it will happen at some point in time. Um, but I, I've kind of always been a grinder. Like a lot of those times, those Denny's like, um, like we've caught so many like call fish in the last like mm-hmm. five minutes. It just keeps you going. It's a little different down South when you're, it's not like you're got a three pounder. You have to get rid of and catch a four pounder like up here, but sometimes you might only have two fish in the live well and you're right. looking for, you know, three, four and five in the next 45 minutes. But, uh, it, it, it's just something over time. It's happened so many times and it doesn't always, you know, there's going to be days you're going to come up there with, two, three fish in your bag and it didn't happen, but, mm-hmm. um, just, I've seen it happen too many times. And if you, if you give up, it's not going to happen. And it, it's it, like I said, I don't want to use the word no, but like you have to like know that it's going to happen at some point in time during the day. It, and like, I, I, I feel like my last hour of the day is better than my first hour of the day. Cause you're, I mean, yeah, practice and whatever, but you're basically starting over every every single day. So as the day goes on and the more stuff you've tried and failed and tried and failed, you're really getting closer to sure. what the deal might actually be. So that last hour of the day on the water, is, you're way more dialed in than you were when you started. And, a lot, and it seems like a lot of people, they, you know, they base everything off practice and they run everything that they found in practice in those first few hours of the day. And don't do anything and they just like give up like it's over like hopeless this isn't going to work out and i i get more confident as the day goes on just because you're out there that day the day that matters um and you've seen little clues and things and even if it's not catching fish you know you're like oh they're not doing this anymore they're not doing this anymore let's try this let's try this let's try this you're you're getting one step closer to figuring it out the entire time and um like i said i just like know in the back of my head it's going to happen and like I said, I, I like the last hour of the day more than the first half of it, to be honest with you. It doesn't that always kind of, work out. It kind of makes sense because, I mean, I mean, we've all ran into this. Like, it's rare that your best practice, you hammer them, or oh, especially yeah. in a multi-day event. And yeah. it's like, it's more the ones where, like you're saying, you get a couple of clues, you take those clues, what you learn in that day, and when it comes together during the day, that's when you crush them. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, any, any new sponsors or are you just kind of rocking with the same crew? From uh, last year? I'm pretty well filled up. I did get one new sponsor, or I guess two new sponsors this year, kind of more on the hunting side. I, I picked up Crestliner boats for aluminum boats, got a couple mm-hmm. of John boats from them. And then nice. uh, uh, PPF mud motors. It's a super light, portable six and a half horse mud motor that goes on. It's real nice for carrying off the side of the road. These boats don't have trailers and stuff. So <laughs> rocking with them and then uh, got fired from Plano and that was about <laughs> it. Nice. Um, you ever been to Wahi? Yes, I, I went out there this year. Well, I fished a tournament there three, four years ago. Hmm. Uh, oh, you, um, yeah, you were on the Elite's the last time they were there. there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I didn't didn't yeah. think much of the lake at that time. Uh went back out there a couple times this late summer, early fall after they announced we were going back there and did some looking around. I definitely think the lake's a lot better than I shouldn't say that. I, I there's definitely a region to that lake that is the deal. Um mm-hmm. last time we w- took off out of the dam area or at the bottom end of the lake and it was a full run with no gas options to get to the yeah. edge of where the lake like starts to get decent and everything good is kind of up from there. Um, so I, yeah, when I first went there, I didn't think much of it. Now that I went there again, it, it's amazing. I don't think it's going to fish real well when we're there. Um, just because everything seems super obvious and you put a hundred guys out there. That's just not yeah. gonna. That's not gonna last. If it was a twenty boat tournament, yeah, everybody would catch a hundred plus fish a day and have a bunch of nice ones. But I don't. I don't think it's the way it's set up. I don't think it's gonna be great for. Uh, you know, maybe some guy can find some off the wall little spots where you can catch a few big ones. But from what I saw, it was all kind of megawads on like the most obvious stuff on like the first spot you'd 
pick out off Blake Master, like they're there. Like you can, I, I don't think it'll fish well for our tournament. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be good, but it's boats. not gonna be like yeah. Like if you went out there like ten hundred pound bags or anything like that, it's gonna yeah. Be no, if you like, went out there and just like went out fun fishing or had like a twenty boat tournament out there, you'd blast the hell out of them. Like yeah, they're the dumbest smallmouths I've ever seen in my life. Like no questions asked, but yeah. um. I, I don't think that translates well on a big field multi-day tournament. Yeah, I, I fished a, a TBF regional out there, and same thing. Like especially with my older classic, I could just start to get <laughs> to yeah. where the fish were, and I had to turn around. So yeah. Uh, uh I don't. You don't. You don't do any straight fluoro, do you? On spinning rounds. Uh, he's talking drop a, shot specifically a, here but not for drop shot no yeah. spy bait it's the only thing i throw straight floor on and really looking at it i think i could get by braid to leader with just like just a super mega like, 20, like 30 40 yeah. foot leader yeah um but yeah drop shot the, everything else braid to a leader for me on a spinning run yeah joel in my opinion there is no advantage to straight floral <laughs> Unless I guess the only the only advantage is you don't have to learn a, a, a line to line knot, but once you learn that, then there's there's yeah. nothing. Uh, have you ever played around with the, the short rods for spawning or vertical smallies? Uh, no, I haven't. Have not tried it. I know some guys got into that. Douglas and them guys were doing yeah. the ice rod deal, but um, honestly, I haven't fished a real spawning smallmouth tournament in a long time and then when i'm at home i kind of avoid them like um i just don't i don't i, I i'd rather catch like pre-spawn or post-spawn smallmouth and like mm -hmm. go like even if i'm up at mille Lacs when they're all spawning like i'll just not fish for them i mean i understand doing it in a tournament scenario but right like my three-year-old daughter could catch every one of them so i I feel I feel bad for him. He, uh, like Malax, you'll see like lines of boats going around, and it's like, oh, that's the fifteenth time that one got caught today. Like, I'll just let him be and catch him before or after he spawns. Oh, that's right. I, I forgot about something here. I was gonna because we're getting festive. I forgot about this. Oh, give me a second here. We got. Uh... These <laughs> and uh, those. Look at that. It's oh, getting nice. Spirit. You decorated. Huh? I yeah. like it. <laughs> Just for you, Sean. I turned on the Christmas lights when you got here, bud. Uh, yep. Jack likes to know, like, how many things do you like to have going going into a tournament? Like, how many irons in the fire? Probably at least three. I mean, even if they're real weak, you know, maybe just a bite or two on some kind of deal it'd be nice um very few times would i go i don't think i've ever gone like all in on one thing really maybe two things but i think you need at least three options and you might end up with trying four five six seven eight nine before it's all said and done especially in a three four day event right yeah now. yeah Gaff wants to know, are you always like super detail on your tackle, or is that something that you kind of long, learned along the way? No, I think that's just, uh, I don't know, personality trait I have. I, I like tinkering with stuff. And like, I, like I, I, I know it's not possible, but I always strive for like 100% fish land, like bite to landing ratio, which is non existent. So like every time I lose a fish, like I'm trying to fix a problem, whether it's the hook or the hook set or the rod or the line or whatever it may be. I'm just like trying to fine tune it more and more and more and eventually strive for that goal of catching everything that bites, but it's, it's not possible. <laughs> That's funny. Ryan says his kids call uh, Mountain Dew llama juice. I like it. <laughs> I'm more of a diet llama juice guy. Yeah. But uh yeah, but other than that. Uh 
you got any tricks for breaking down big bodies of water? Do you like to like pick an area based on research or do you sample a bunch of it? Like what's your, uh, no, I will pick an area of the lake and I'm not going to say live or die in it. I, um, but I, when I first started fishing, like bigger tournaments traveling, like I, for some reason I wanted to see the whole lake, like, um, and I think that just hurts you more than anything because mm-hmm. it's been, we get three days of practice. It's been, say it's a reservoir. It's been one day up the river, one day mid lake, one day down by the dam. And when you look back at it, you got like three places up river, three places in the middle of the lake, three places down by the dam. And then your tournament day is just junk. You try to run all that or maybe commit to one or whatever. And now, now I find myself really, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of the places we've been to multiple times now, so that makes it a lot easier. But um, just kind of try to pick an area of the lake that's going to fit the way I want to fish the most and then spend all three days in it. I, I try to, but first day of practice, I do a lot of, I might poke my head in a few more places than I want to just kind of try to get in the right part of the lake with the right cover, the right water color, wherever I've feel the best at and then i'll spend my entire practice there just because I, I think you're you know that might be a 20 mile stretch of lake or or whatever but break it down like not trying to fish the whole lake um pick one zone spend your whole time in it because that way each day you know you're going to find a few spots now they're all in one area plus you've been in that area a bunch like you know, you've driven into that one creek a couple times, like, oh, there's a juicy looking lay down right there. I never fished it in the tournament, but then tournament day comes along, you're fishing somewhere else, you caught one and see a lay down and you catch one off of it. And you're like, oh, I'm, there's a juicy lay down right over here, run over there, catch one off that kind of deal. Um, so yeah, I like to, I like to spend my entire practice in one third or quarter of the lake. Yeah. And like, if you spend a day and a half there and it just doesn't go, you might scrap it and leave it behind yeah. and pick a new quarter or third for that last day, yeah. you know, but. And that that's more like reservoir stuff. You know, you go to a place like a Sabine or something like that. You just, um, I might pick, you know, one or two of the rivers to hit. You just, mm-hmm. that place is so spread out. You couldn't really do that there. It was a Packer question, but we don't need to be swearing on the uh, the stream. So, uh, uh, any 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 favorite pro athletes or anglers out there besides yourself? Uh, Denny Brower's always been my guy. Nice, this old school yeah. flipping stick jig. Like I wanted to be like him when I was growing up, and I like the way he fishes. He's my favorite. I was sad to see schooled by Denny Brower to go. That was like probably the best TV show ever made. Yeah. That was a good one. Man, it's going crazy. I might just have to skip ahead here. Let's go pick one off the uh, the, the, the 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 pre-show questions here while I'm getting caught up here. Uh, is there like one or two baits that you would say that was like your key baits in your angler of the year season? Um, it'd be a few more than that, but it was all like stuff i really like fishing like i flipped a jig a lot i flipped a tube a lot i swam a jig a lot threw a chatterbait a lot and shallow cranked a lot just kind of all stuff i really like like that new og slim from rapala that was a big player and then outcast swim jig outcast flipping jig an old school just generic green pumpkin tube and uh a chatterbait just kind of all stuff i like really like right. catching them it seemed like like in years past i've always kind of tried to do the thing like you know like you go to florida and everybody's talking about speed worms and like stuff mm-hmm. like that and i try to like make myself fish a speed worm like it's just not my deal like i, I do better fishing baits i have more confidence in rather than trying to do what like the locals do or whatever for sure yeah that question was from chris <laughs> russ on the YouTube, um, good call, Jay. I mean, they're just talking ice fishing over on the clam page, so who would want to watch that? Um, who wins in a wing eating contest, you or Douglas? I think I, think I can I, eat Douglas. I think I would, eating. yeah. I, I yeah. can eat more than I look like. 
Douglas is a little bit of a dandy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Let's, yeah, he can definitely cook better than I can, but I think yeah. I could eat more. I'd let him too. cook the wings, but yeah. you and I could probably eat them under the table. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Keith. Merry Christmas to everybody on the stream, everybody tuning in on Facebook and, and YouTube and the future replays. Um, <laughs> have you have you ever even tried to attempt to like rig an inu rig? I have I have no interest in trying to do have you seen that? That's stupid. Is that the worm do. like yeah, where it like, like curls up when you yeah. pull on it? Uh I have not attempted and not planning to, but if Takumi Ito starts kicking everybody's ass on it this year, I'll probably play with it, but have not although, even attempted. Although I think the Z-Man stuff would probably work well with it. Probably hold, Cause I would think like a regular worm, like you'd catch a fish on it. It would just like shred it. And like, yeah. if you were going to do it, the Z-Man, like that probably would work a little better. Yeah. Have you tried the free rig? No. Um, I know a lot of guys are catching them on it, but, uh, I have not. I kind of went old school, man. I like. Yeah. I kind of put the spinning rods down and all the finessey, tricky stuff, and just like old, dirty bank beater power fishing. Like, I just, I don't. I just feel like if I like fish efficiently on the bank, fast, I'll run into five dumb ones. Sure. Rather than sitting at a bridge and using six pound line, you know, making 10 minutes per cast, like trying to get something to bite. Like I'd rather cover more water and just look for one that's just going to bite something when he drop one on his head versus trying to like trick fish into biting. Very John Cox of you. I'm down with it. That, that's how I like to fish. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Um, you do anything? I mean, is is there anything different going into next year? Like, do you fish more free? Do you put more pressure because you want to back it up? Like, what are your thoughts going into this season? No, I, th I think I will fish a maybe a lot like I did this year, but with the different. Like, I really want to win like a, just a straight up regular blue trophy, sure. and like the AOI was never really on my mind, and it happened, and like I. I don't like I'd almost rather win like obviously a classic or even just like a regular season single or you know full field four day event. Um so I like that's my goal this year. I'd really I really really want to win one and um obviously qualify for the classic for next year. But uh as far as like trying to repeat AOI, I don't think that's if it happens, it happens. It's not that's something awesome, I right, think about. Yeah. yeah. We have over 200 live between uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube, so we'll just we'll celebrate a little bit. Snow, yeah, a little, little like fireworks snow thing. Oh, okay, yeah. that the snow NATO coming? Yeah, maybe that might be <laughs> probably what it looks like outside. An accurate representation by the time we get done. Um, any other tricks that you have for breaking down? Uh, you know, a late. He, he suggests leech or taka, but grass filled lakes. And I, I, those are, I don't know, would you consider like the same approach for leech and taka, or would you treat those differently? Uh, I really can't speak much about leech lake. I've only okay. fished her a handful, a couple times a long time ago before I knew what I was doing. Like, as far as like a mill, if I can find milfoil in a lake, I'm going to try to fish it and I'll get like super stubborn with it. Like, um, it's something. That, you do you really have to commit to it like and you need to really be okay with going eight hours without a bite like the problem i see with most people grass flipping like they, they like try it for a couple hours and don't get a bite and they give up like i'll put my trolling motor down and flip milfoil for till dark without a bite and wake up the next day and do it again like that's how confident i am mm -hmm. in it like just because I know like how it goes, like it's going to take you forever to find a spot. But once you do find a spot, those fish are yours. Like no one else is going to find them unless it's like something stupid, obvious, like a huge point tip going out in the lake. But as far as just like straight strips of milfoil go, like um, I think it's just something that kind of has to be learned. Like I think your eyes pick up on just kind of inherent stuff after you've done it a long time. Like I think I, 
new guy might approach going down the edge maybe a little different than I would. I think your eyes are just kind of attracted to like, oh, it, more of a trained eye kind of deal. Like certain right. stuff that looks good to me, the guy just starting doing it might not think twice about and vice versa stuff that looks good to him i might just speed by but um it's kind of something that just takes a lot of time and practice and it's it's a it's a mindset more than anything like you have to absolutely commit to it it is not something you dabble in like we go to like a champagne or a cayuga and i mean i'll mix in some smally stuff when i can't see like if it's early in the morning or if sure. it's raining and windy and like low light conditions i'll go fish for smallies just to have something to fall back on but if i can see i will be flipping a jig in the grass the entire time and i am a-okay with going an entire day without a bite like it's, it's really just a mindset yeah <laughs> at, yeah in practice but just to be clear we're talking about practice <laughs> yeah but once you find them they're pretty much yours unless the wind blows them out or something you know sure uh Bassmaster Matt asked in kind of the pre on YouTube is like, if you had one tip for a decent angler to step up their game, what would you say? Hmm. So. I, I would say, I don't know what that really means, but uh... I'm just saying, like, maybe a guy that like, like, <coughs> feels it in his club, but he wants to like take it to the next level. What's like one thing he should do to like, step up his game uh, i think uh, the tournaments can kind of really teach you everything just kind of keep moving up you know if you're fishing club i mean i don't know where the guy's from but if you're fishing club stuff and then you know maybe move up to the denny's or the mm -hmm. minnesota team bass trail nation look like it's got some pretty good competition in it or you know bfls on the river or whatever i think I, I think you will plat if you stay in a club and never fish anything other than it, I think you'll only get as good as the guys you're fishing against. Sure. And I think every step of level, and it's going to take a few years. Every time you move up, it's like, you're going to start out getting your butt whipped. Then you're going to do okay. And then you're going to be decent. Like it's not going to, you're not just going to walk up in the next level and take everybody's money. It's not going to happen. Um, so I think just keep progressing in bigger and bigger tournaments. And then, as far as like nationally fishing, I think a guy needs some experience in each kind of region of the country. You know, you got your Florida stuff, your Texas stuff, your Carolinas, your Ozarks, and then river fishing's pretty well all the same. You can you can learn everything you need to know in lacrosse about mm -hmm. the Red River or you know, any of those type of river systems. But as far as like the the reservoirs and the lakes go they're definitely regional i'd say new york and minnesota if you if you can catch them in minnesota you'll catch them in new york for sure um but florida is its own animal texas is its own animal the carolinas are the ozarks are you i think once you get all those get some experience in all those regions it makes it a lot easier to travel around and do that and that might be you know the cheapest best way to do it. it's probably co-angling um yeah instead of going broke fishing the opens or the toyotas or whatever but um yeah you definitely got to just keep progressing your way up through tournaments and yeah and if you're not a tournament angler just push yourself geographically right like if you, if you if you catch them really good on minnetonka and the metro lakes then like go down to south by mankato go down to the river go up yeah. north and fish some go up by grand rapids and fish you know the crystal clear lakes and so just yeah. start pushing yourself you know put, get out of your comfort zone and try new waters so yeah um, and i definitely think comp like the guys you fish against make the biggest difference like what i've noticed like all the really good guys that come out of our area they're either coming out of the cross or the river i'm not going to say just across pool four to pool 10 fishing the bfls or they come out of minnetonka fishing the denny's like um i just think the competition makes you better like the guys you fish against like shane raveling like he he never taught me anything he never showed me anything i really didn't like him for most of my life he was like <laughs> super cocky and i always talked trash after he beat me but he 1000 percent made me a better angler just trying to beat him if that makes any sense 
Yeah. You were much more subtle and quiet when you took our money in the weekend series than, than Shane was in any tournaments I fished against him. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. He'll, he'll tell you about how good he is after he beats you, but <laughs> he's he kind of lit. Yeah. He lit a fire under me and it, yeah. like, I don't want to say I hated him, but like I really wanted to beat him. So you know, who has a really killer Shane impersonation It's Bankston. Does he? <laughs> yeah. I can see that. At least I heard a lot of that trash talking. <laughs> Ed Cowan in the chat. Ed's like, I don't know if you know who Ed is, but he's, uh, I believe, out of New Jersey. He, like, he's OG, like, made several classics to the nation back in the day. Okay. Uh, but uh, so he, one thing he noticed, and, and I, and I see this too, like, you, when you fish circuits and regions, for instance, like, I ran into Douglas in the weekend series all the time um, because we fish similar. Who, who are guys you run into out on the tour consistently? Do you see a lot of? You mean like fishing the same water and stuff? Yeah, like I mean, over a year, like you're gonna bump into this angler, like you know, six out of the nine tournaments because you fish similar, or pick certain regions, or um, on, honestly, I think it's Bob Downey. Okay, and I really don't even run into him that often, but like, there's been a few tournaments where we've shared water and. Um, mm-hmm super respectful like it, we fished a tournament on gunnersville uh we were literally flipping mats and it was literally two strips of matted up grass he stayed on one the whole time i stayed on the other we never crossed paths or never fished each other's strip of grass even though they were like 30 yards apart from each other but um yeah and and really that's only been a few times i kind of try to avoid mm-hmm. people as much as i can or maybe just notice him because he's the other guy with a raffle rap. Yeah, no, it's there's only been a few times that I fish around people and he's been there a few times. So nice. Uh Gaffos, is there anybody outside of like your house crew that uh, your buddies with or that you talk with on the elites that maybe somebody wouldn't? Um that you wouldn't expect to talk to. Um I mean, obviously, your roommate with the Johnsons and you know, yeah, Johnsons, Jesse, guys, like, Maddie Robertson. We all talk, and then I mean, I really don't. I don't know what you mean by talk, but like, I don't really talk fishing with any of the rest of them. Sure. Um, we hang out with like Lee, Livesey, and Caleb. Um, they room together. They'll come over and hang out every once sure. in a while, but that, that's about it. Is I kind of kind of keep so some roll tight. Yeah. <laughs> maybe douglas this year if you see him around yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah i'm sure we'll be uh getting dinner with douglas a few nights what's what's your what's your go-to jig trailer um that's pretty seasonal for me um just really depends on water temp um and i don't think particular jig trailers much matter i just like if it's cold water something real subtle you know chunk style or mm-hmm. something that doesn't really kick a lot um then uh when it gets real hot i kind of like a, a faster action trailer like those the z-man goat it's got that little yep. double twin tail get a lot of action out of that and then like if i'm swimming a jig i, I like a big you know like a turbo craw rage craw mm-hmm. big big flapping right. arms yeah bass fishing fools those guys, the people with the green names bolded out are channel members. So there's a there's a link down below if you want to join the the Hellabass team, Hellabass, and, and and support the channel. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think there's any plans. Douglas will be traveling with Bree. I'm guessing. Yeah, um, he he's gonna do the camper gig. I'm sure he'll be parked next to Carl and Paul and Nick every night. We'll be crammed in a house with a bunch of Canadians and a hillbilly. I'm pretty sure his favorite jig is the. Uh, uh, what's your favorite? The the stealth or the it's cage? The stealth. No, I really don't throw the cage much okay. at all. It was kind of built out of necessity for. I know a lot of guys prefer that style of jig, but for me, it's the stealth. Like nine times out of ten, it's just not the greatest. And like, uh, really, the only place I have problems with it is in like the the pine trees you get down south, where mm-hmm. like your line just gets in the bark all the time and like it does have a pretty soft weed guard on it but if you got a, like a trained hand you can worm it through stuff good but for one of those guys that kind of like pulls into everything 
um, the cage is a better option for you. What do you like? What's your main advantage for braid to flora when you're flipping? Um, I'd say probably f- it's a few things. I, I'm flipping a seven foot medium heavy, a super light rod. If I flip straight floral, I'd have to use a seven six heavy, which doesn't sound like much if you go fishing for two hours a day. But if you flip like nine months straight, your elbow will thank the hell out of you for using a seven foot medium heavy. Um, I'm not re spooling every day, it's just a new leader. That's it. And then I, I can get away with really terrible hook sets. Like, some, you don't always hit them perfect every time, you know what I mean? Sure. Sometimes they move a little more or quicker than it. Like with that braid to a leader and a stealth with that lighter weed guard, you could literally reel into them like with a spinning rod and hook every one of them. Where if you go stiff rod and floral carbon, <laughs> if there's an extra foot of slack in that line when you go to hit them than you thought there was, that that dude's going to jump and come off. Like, so it's multiple reasons for me. Um, you can still hit them super hard with the braid deleter. You just got to let your drag slip, but I can yeah. get away with more air and um, and then fatigue to using a light then, little rod. And then is this versus straight braid, is it a visibility thing for you or abrasion resistance? Like why do you like the floral leader versus oh, straight braid? Uh, I think floral leader, I think I'm going to get, get more, more bites on it. Okay um and then i also think fluorocarbon handles better around really hard cover like wood and metal okay. and um zebras yeah stuff like that i mean obviously you're gonna have to retie but i've just seen braid like just like that on like a metal boat lift with covering zebra muscles i don't care if it's 50 pound braid i've seen it get sawed like that and i i think with heavy floral you can pin that fish and still get to them and like if you're fishing wood, like I feel like braid cuts into the wood sometimes. Yeah. So are you excited to end the season at lacrosse or I don't know. I feel like <laughs> No, absolutely not. I think uh no disrespect to anybody that fishes there, but I think that place is a fraction of the fishery it was the last in the last few years. Um it seems like one guy will still seem to catch a good bag, but that place like three, four years ago, like 12 pounds would get you laughed at. And I bet you, unless something weird happens with like really high water or something like that, I would think 12 pounds a day would, could maybe put you in the top 10 there when we go there. It's really sucked the last few yeah. years. It's uh, um, It has its moments, but yeah, like I was down it there does. early September and what, like, I mean, I had a pretty guard, I mean, it ended up being 15 pounds a day to win. And I was on pace to do that, but I just couldn't put five in the boat the last day. <laughs> yeah. But, and that shouldn't really be a problem on those pools. No. That's those that's that used to be the place you go catch a hundred and complain yeah. you never got a four pound bite, you know. Yeah, I mean um, I, I had what fifteen the first day and sixteen the first day, and I think I caught seven six or seven fish the first day and caught eight or nine the second day only. Like I mean yeah. Yeah, it's just not. I don't know if it's from all the pressure in the tournaments or what what the deal is with it, but those pools just haven't seemed to be. I, don't, I just remember last time we went there on the Elite Series, I had like fourteen some pounds one day, and I don't even think I was in the money. Like, it ain't gonna be like that when we go there. I know that. <laughs> Yeah, especially because you guys are waiting to whatever September, so it's like it's gonna be put through yeah, the pace end of the August. Yeah. yeah, it'll be like kind of the slower time of year to fish there. It's not really fall. I think yet. if you fished it in May or June or something like that, it'd still be pretty good. Yeah, which yeah. Gonna be done, but yeah. Um, have you played around with Mega Live at all? And do you think it has an application for grass fishing? Uh, yes and no, depending on what kind of grass you're fishing. Um. I could definitely see it playing a lot in hydrilla and coontail just because the fish kind of tend to sit around it and outside of it. But as far as like milfoil flipping, I don't I don't believe it you would see anything on it. Sure. What are your ideal grass flipping conditions? Uh glass calm and blazing sun. 
Not a not a wisp of a cloud. Not a man. ripple. Like, not a single cloud in the sky. Your your mind is better. Yeah. Your diet. Your mind is boiling on the carpet. Like just dripping sweat down your eyebrows into your eyeballs. Like yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, that's and, the and is there anything like? Is there ever a time you or how you decide grass versus in the grass or like edge versus being in the flat? Um, it did depend more on like the kind of grass it was. If it was like a hard grass, like a hydrilla or coontail, I'd prefer to fish edges. But um, if it's milfoil, I prefer like up in it. Okay. Any thoughts? The Zillion HD, I'm not sure I quite answer that. I don't know. Uh, you tell us any thoughts. Oh, that's a, that's a JDM model. It's super badass. Um, I shot a little video on it. They let me hold it for like 15 minutes and then took it away and put it in a case and sent it back to Japan. So um, I'm sure you can get them on uh, like some of those Japanese tackle sites. I'm not sure what they're called, but I know there's some out yeah. there where you can get like jdm stuff it'll be available there super badass real but it, it's not going to be a u.s market thing have you ever dabbled with the visor game or you just doesn't work for you ever thought about like letting that stuff come out the top and do anything or uh i don't know i think i did try visor a little early in my fishing career just it just wasn't for me just didn't didn't, didn't mesh yeah wasn't feeling it Takes a special kind of swagger. I mean, yeah. I mean, much like like a the, the long hair and the mullet it takes a different kind of swagger that I don't have. So I get it. Teach Earl. You probably don't have time to do the Sturgeon Bay Open anymore, do you? Is that something you even like? Do you check the uh, schedule to even see anymore? No, I, I do. I don't know why, but I do like going there. I, I'm always really excited to go there. And every time I leave there, I tell myself I'm never fishing it again. But um, yeah, I'm sure if it fits in the schedule, me and Gus will. Sign up for it. I'm sure the Johnsons will be there and take everyone's money. Well, that's cool, Colton. Yeah, if you fish the Bass Nation, we look forward to see you at Lahamadu, hopefully. Um, Banks wants to know, has Robertson ever paid for dinner? Uh, I think so. He's not that cheap. He usually take pairs, you know, takes his turn paying for dinner. Do you think the Tokyo is better in clean or stained water? Um, I, it works well in both. I don't, I don't, I don't really think it's a watercolor issue. Yeah, I, I this year the one thing that I've, I like using it like instead of a biffle head. Yeah, like, that's my yeah. new thing. Like yeah. big weight and just crawling it. Yeah, because like I feel like your hook, your hookup is so much better. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Especially on small mouse, like I seem to miss a lot on like a regular hard head. I don't, I don't know, Sean. I don't know what. Do you have any advice for bank fishing Lake Michigan for Sean? <laughs> uh, like that's a really big area. Is he Wisconsin? He's in Chicago. He's Chicago? Near Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> I mean, I know like uh, that Cal Sag River that runs through there. Like, get, like I, you could do a lot of really good shore fishing on Lake Michigan because I know when I I fished there a couple times and like all the places we caught them, you could have fished from shore. Um, so like, look for current breaks. Like uh, no, there. like, I, I mean, like on the lake, I know the river's okay. got some options and I know some guys fish there like through downtown, but you could actually fish the main shore of Lake Michigan mm -hmm. kind of, it's pretty obvious where it is. Cause it's a lot of like sand banks and then you'll have stretch stretches of like, I don't even know if you'd call it riprap, but like giant rock, they're almost square, um, rocks so, where they're piled up and you could get right on those and cast a tube or a jig out or whatever. So target the, basically the. Yeah, the either the sea walls or the big rocky walls, shorelines and kind of skip the sandy banks. All right. Matt Deitch wants to know, do you have any cut rituals? Uh, no, I have treat a lot yourself? of rituals, like... but no, I don't do anything different if I make the cut. Um, yeah, I got a lot of rituals, but not that's I don't have one for that. You don't, you don't treat yourself any different when you make a final day or anything like that? No. No. What's up, Epic Eric? Good to see you, dude. That's awesome. So you have this uh like mantra that you're very relaxed and carefree and stress-free. Is that 
just the outward appearance like inside is it like kind of all bound up sometimes or is that just or how do you stay that way if that is how you are uh, the, i mean the wheels are always turning up there and i definitely have like little spins that happen throughout the course of a tournament but i god i've been asked this before i don't so it's, I don't it's know if like, it's something you can answer, spins. but yeah, a, a lot of guys spins become big spins. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. a lot of guys will have those little spins and they just snowball into big spins. There's definitely like half hour or hours <laughs> throughout the <laughs> day. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. hours throughout the day where I might literally be spinning out, but I seem to be able to calm myself down and keep pushing, get back on track. Anyways, it's, it's so mental no matter what level you're at obviously i'm not like, yeah. at the level that says oh it's all the same it don't it doesn't I mean, matter it's no it's, different yeah it, and it doesn't it's, matter if it's like a missed fish or your motor doesn't start or yeah. your troll motor prop flies off or you break a rod like you just gotta like okay that sucked like let yeah. it out 10 seconds and then you got to figure out well how am i going to make the best out of this and move on right like yeah uh, Scariest competitor on the elites besides yourself? I'd say that's a toss up between. I don't want, I mean, maybe intimidating would be a better word. I'd, sure. I, I think Greg Hackney and Jason Christie are the two most intimidating guys to fish against. I mean, the scariest it's, is Robertson and his whitey tighties, but intimidating would be yeah, the other guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh what's what's your go-to hair jig rod like what's your setup uh it's a Daiwa. it's a rod i've made for him for hair jig and it's a seven six medium light um i use six pound nano braid then leader you can do whatever you want really some guys throw six i i throw 10 i don't think the floral carbon matters it's just a long light spinning rod the lightest braid you're comfortable fishing is kind of the key to everything. And it's all about just being able to cast the thing really. Yeah. And so pretty much all the stuff Seth's talking about, you can use that Omnia code that's scrolling down there. Cause Omnia pretty much carries you it can. all. So. They got it all. <laughs> uh, what's your chicken rod set up? Um, that I, that, that's one I go to the big, giant rod that i used to that i put down either up somewhere in the seven either seven six heavy or an eight foot heavy um is that a floral braid to floral or I, I do i do um joder he throws a straight floral on it I, I i like to just gaff them and just wrench them on it so i throw a 30 or 40 pound braid to a 20 pound floral leader and a seven six or eight foot heavy something something big and long i can move a lot of line with nice i'm pretty sure you're all fg right i am i am and i think you have some videos out i don't remember if they're on wired to fish or somewhere right and you do a little different finish or something on the end or yeah i kind of tweak it a little but i don't know if it's necessary it was more necessary for me at first because i don't think i was tying them perfect and that kind of thick made a non-perfect one good so i just kind of stuck with it yeah, you're still rocking the Nico style hooks for drop shot. Oh, absolutely! I'll never yeah. use a like a split Keto shot or any, anything that ever. looks anything no. like a circle. Yeah, yeah. If the uh, yeah, if the shank yeah, just, ain't twice as long or three times as long as the point. I don't want nothing to do with yeah. it. We just talked about it. FG. Uh, There you go. That's I just noticed that. Now I can't unsee it. Like the little things, like the little. Oh yeah. Yeah. They look like little antlers. Those are, like those little... are the three sets of flowers I've ever gotten for my wife, and she's dried them out. She's she's it. holding on to them because he doesn't know when the next yeah. ones are coming. No. <laughs> no. I think they're a giant waste of money. Uh. So let's pick. How long is this leader? Let's just say uh, flipping because it, it does <coughs> right. But... Yeah, um, I want to say it's around 10 feet. Basically what I do, I tie my FG, then I reel my reel <laughs> off the spool, 
till my FG knot gets to the last guide right above my reel. Then I take my fluoro, and I, when I'm done with my bait on it, I want my bait even with my reel and not at the first guide. So I think it's probably around 10 feet. And you do, like I think, like 20-pound like braid to like 20, 25-pound uh, I'm 30, 40-pound braid to 20-pound okay. fluoro, like nine times out of 10. Do you dabble with the big baits? No. Not even for fun? Like not even like goofing around at home or, or no, just not like it's embarrassing. Don't want I, I, got like a, I got a high power herring. I got a hinkle shad. I've never made a cast with either one of them. I, I just Honestly, they're, they're not tournament. Right? They're not tournament baits. I've just seen like I mean the best swim baiters come fish our tournaments and they just bomb every time. Like the in or, like we would have to be on like a like, I don't even think it exists anymore. It might be on a lake that there's never been a big tournament on. But out of any of the – even the Lake Forks and the, um, you know, just the slugfest-type lakes, I don't even think you can do that there. I mean, yeah, you might catch one a day on it. But, like, in order to do that, I feel like you have to commit half of your day to it to get that one. It's just it's just not a tournament bait. Like, yeah. you saw Kennedy win in Clear Lake, but that was freaking – 20 years ago line, like yeah like everybody was catching 25 30. i mean like that was yeah. like right like i mean yeah if it just you doesn't exist a, anymore a mega lake and it was going off like sure then yeah. you dabble with it to see if it like yeah made, but. like if we went to that oh ivy i could see that working there but you're not going to do that on a gunnersville you're not going to do that on a lake fork you probably can't even do that on clear lake anymore i don't know i don't fish california but like even those places like I don't you just think have you to can catch... do it four days in a row and catching five big ones four days. You'd in have a row to catch on one it. of the super lakes on a mega upswing when everything was right. Yeah, yeah. So you know what? What, what is your what? What you know? You, you drive back and forth to Minnesota a ton, right? Like, what's yeah. your what's your road food? What's your what's your jam? Um, it's kind of regional. I'd say right now at the moment in the Midwest, Culver's is winning um and then down south especially you get out east they got a lot of little weird kind of i don't know a lot of jack in the box kind of weird do you, do you do like the zaxby's no 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 i'm a i'm a, like a double cheeseburger kind of guy and then uh gas stations usually just like chips and jerky yeah and a slightly chilled dew and yeah it's the only time they're cold is when they come from the gas station. Uh, Koi wants to know what's your what's your frog rod set up and when do you put the, what, what water temp do you put the frog down? Mm, I don't think water temp is the issue with a frog bite. Um, if a bass is in a foot of water, it'll bite a top water. I'll tell you that right now. Sure. I, Cade showed me that on the river. I watched him catch a fish on a spook in like 40 degree water. So I know that if a bass is living that shallow, a top water is a great option. Regardless, sure. water temp doesn't matter. Now, if you're trying to get a fish to come out of three foot of water and eat a frog, then yeah, it probably does need to be in. Um, Upper 60s. 40s, low 50s. No, I, I, in the okay. in the spring, I honestly I like throwing top water a lot in the spring in those low to mid 50 hmm. temps, especially if you get the right day. Um, and then in the fall, I think you could probably drag it out even farther, where you could get down into those upper 40s and still have success top water fishing. But I swear to God, I seen Kate catch one on a spook in 40 degree water, but um that obviously was a bass that was in that much water but um if you're not super shallow fishing i would say upper 40s is probably the limit uh go to largemouth 40 to 45 three to six foot visibility water uh that's probably a jerk bait would be real strong then um a flat side crankbait 
probably more if it if you're at that six foot visibility and it was you didn't have a ripple on the water it'd be hard to beat a jerk bait i would think so he specifically asked about ike but what do you think just in general about like the uh i don't know the the turnover and like the christies the ikes the j pals like just people coming back do you like are you like let's go the the better competition the better or you're like uh i didn't like the better one there wasn't <laughs> so many hammers like what what do you think uh no i like them coming back yeah and uh yeah they're all guys i like too so that helps it wasn't sure it wasn't any of the douches that came back so um yeah i'm all for it Bill wants to know: Are you still heartbroken that you didn't qualify as the Kennedy Sports Hall of Fame? Oh, I just, I'm just finding out now that I didn't qualify. <laughs> no, no. I thought that was still happening. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I am heartbroken. So we'll try again next year. Maybe so if I Bill, call, maybe if I Bill lives class, across the street from it. me, and we oh, actually fish it? together a little bit, and our kids yeah. are the same age. And like, like oh, yeah. my, my kid had a gymnastics meet at Kennedy maybe like two years ago, and like one of the stairwells, they've got like these. Uh, big heads uh, like those walls like okay. a basketball player and a gymnast yeah. and a soccer player and i took a picture i was like where's seth why isn't why isn't he here well all right what's your favorite okay what's your favorite minnesota like not named Malax or minnetonka how about that not happening i'm not telling no. What's what's your favorite lake that you can name? It wouldn't name? be my favorite lake for very long, would it? Okay, what's what's a what's a fun lake that you can name that's already like a mainstream lake? Minnetonka. Like a lake the tournaments already go to. Like Lake Minnetonka. Like okay. We'll move on. You know how this works. <laughs> well, I'm not expecting you to tell me a lake. The, that's the like, internet. I mean, you give them an obscure lake and it But I was like, oh, I like anymore. fishing Minnewaska or I like fishing for Min okay. like tournament yeah. lake. Um, ha, ah, they've all been just kind of ruined. I used to love Vermilion. I went up there this year. Wasn't that, it wasn't what I remembered it being. Um, I always loved Lahama, dude. That was one of my favorite lakes to fish. I haven't been there in forever. And I heard yeah. that place actually getting pretty good now, like as far yeah. as, uh, like kicking out some nice bags. That's where the state tournament is there. And I haven't fished it since the weekend series was there, which is forever yeah. ago. Yeah. So I'm excited but, to go back there. Yeah, Seth is, no, it sounds like there's some milfoil in there, and like, shoot, I remember when we when we used to fish there, like a three pounder pounds. was like a yeah. really nice fish, and now they're catching like 19, 18, and 19, like 20, 11 pounds. pounds you get a check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you catch a three pounder and put it in your libel, you just got paid. Like you're gonna yeah. catch four more. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Seth does not have a YouTube channel that I'm aware of. I think uh, I do actually. Okay. And I think there's like one video on there from like 2015, and that's it. So, so. like a very much different, like short haired, yeah, uh, facial yeah, hair, juvenile ghost, uh, ghost. Uh, you can check out Seth a lot on Wired to Fish, uh, Omnia Fishing, and Bass Utopia YouTube channels. So, yeah. Is there any uh, old baits that you wish they still made? Hmm. Like a like an old power slug or like a hard bait. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if it was, I'd be scouring the internet trying to get one. So I'm not doing that. Sure. Is it a so when you pick between a Texas rig and a jig fishing grass? Is it a, like a temperature thing? Is it? thickness is it a just efficiency thing yeah there's a lot to all of that i would say um probably the easiest way to break it down is i i find myself fishing a texas rig a lot more in practice and a jig a lot more in the tournament hmm. but there's definitely like in the fall a jigs better than a texas rig no doubt when you get in that you know september october rain eh, i should say more october but then you're kind of just flipping changes a lot you're kind of just onesie twosie stuff um but I, I i'd say for a good general rule of thumb texas rig in practice and a jig in the tournament yeah for me a, it's texas rig just it's more efficient when you're trying to like 
if you're like got your spot and you're really going to pick it apart with a jig and you're picking stuff off your bait every cast that's fine but if you're just trying to hunt down a fish a texas rig tube will you will find them yeah. with it so what you're saying in practice you can cover more water and make more flips because you're not playing with weeds and right yeah but on the on the flip side when they're biting the jig is more efficient, right? Absolutely. Because you're not fixing trailers. And, and, stuff. I, and I think you get bigger bites on a jig. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've got For a me, million four pounders flipping a tube, and I'm, almost every five pounder I've got flipping has been on a jig. Yeah. Yeah. And when I'm trying to catch them, <laughs> whether it's fun fishing or in a tournament, I'm going to always go with the jig until they tell me they won't eat the jig as well as the Texas rig. Yeah. Pete says he wants his hat. I don't know what that's about. Oh, oh yeah, Maybe he left a hat in my truck. You can just grab it when you're it's got, it. it's got tackling the boat, on Pete. Like, don't don't put yeah. this on set. Yeah, Man, come on. Pete, come to my house, sort all my tackle, and pick up your hat, bum. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Let's let's go back to this one. Uh, is there any weak Brent Hames on the Facebook wanted to ask, like, is there any weaknesses in your game that you think you need to like up for 2022? Um, or something you just feel like you'd like to get better at? No, I know what he means. Like I feel like I think a example, I, I used to be like really trying to stay away from trouble hook baits as much as possible. But in the last few years, I really forced myself to crank a lot more. And I think I've gotten a lot better at that. That was definitely the obvious one a few years ago. Now I'm kind of really stubborn. I definitely have weaknesses, but they're in like places that I don't want to work on, like big baits, you know, like <laughs> glide bait. Like I suck with a glide bait. I'm never, I don't throw them. You know what I mean? I can't possibly be good at it, but it's something that I'm not going to try to get good at, you know? Um, and who knows, maybe I'll suck all year next year, but um, I feel like I'm pretty adept at w what I want to catch them on. There's definitely some holes in my game, but um, stuff I'm trying to stay away from. Like, I'm not the best spy baiter, but I don't like that. Um, and I'm not a big swim bait guy, but I don't want to do that either. see here uh graham from american legacy fishing wants to know how do you grow mustache that sucks less asking for a friend sorry say it again how you grow a good mustache uh that sucks less like, any uh, that wants a better like mustache? i don't know um mine took a really long time to like grow in like you really got to get past the awkward phase like if you're just clean shaven, like you're gonna be awkward for probably a month, um, and then once you got it, you got it. But I think you, to everyone's the same. Like I can't grow any sideburns. Like I would have like a ZZ top beard if I could. Like I had a real strong mustache, literally no sideburns at all. I got this little chin thing going on right now, but I, I mean this is like four months in the making. It's gonna be gone here in a second, but. Um, just take what God gave you and go with it, I guess. Like I said, I'd have a freaking ZZ top beard if I could grow one. I just, I don't grow anywhere, hair anywhere other than my upper lip. And on Facebook, I just told them to try rub some milfoil on it. That was my advice. I could help. Make sure it's zebra free. <laughs> yeah, otherwise it could be dangerous. Did you play mm -hmm. around with Vixens at all? Yeah, I mean, I had some, but no. I don't like, like, I, that's the other thing, like, with these weird baits that you can't get and, like, hard mm -hmm. to find stuff, like, I'm hard on my stuff, like, I will break it, you know what I mean? And then if I have this bait that I can't find anywhere and I have all the confidence in the world and I break it or a pike eats it or whatever happens, then what? Then, like, my confidence is going to go from here to here and I'm going to be throwing something I don't like. Like, I'd rather have, like whatever maybe it's not as good but 30 of them like oh i can break them off get them stuck in a tree whatever piked whatever i can grab another one and like throw it out there that's why i don't really like those little one-off little custom baits they're cool and all but like 
If I can't have 30 of them, I don't want them. Yeah. I've got like 10 Vixens, so I feel good about it. But that's yeah. how I feel about other stuff. Like, I don't like getting into the JDM crankbaits and the the depths plastics and stuff because it's like. Yeah. yeah. If you fall in love with it and then you run out, like, then what? Then you're just going to be throwing something else wishing you were throwing that, you know? Uh, so you fish mostly shallow. Uh, any sneaky tips about being stealthy or things that you do to be like more effective or quiet or anything shallow fishing you think other people don't do or should know? I wouldn't say it's anything they don't do. I mean, um, I turn deucers off a lot, especially if you're fishing like super shallow stuff, turn deucers off and then, um, just be conscious of your trolling motor. Like I'll try to fight the urge to hit it as much as possible. I like to coast, especially if you're fishing isolated stuff where it's like, Oh, that one dock up there, that one lay down, like I'm going to rip up to it and coast into it and like, um, really fight the urge to hit the trolling motor, even though I might be drifting into it or whatever, just still try to sneak another cast in there before I hit the trolling motor, but nothing, nothing that sneaky, really. I think you just no no ice in the live wells. That's the biggest key I took. <laughs> yeah, they feel a temperature change. Yeah, they, they they're like, nope, that's no good. Uh, yeah. You ever go shore fishing for fun? Uh yeah, I think honestly, the last time I shore fished, I mean, a few little ponds down south or whatever, but um, around here was probably when I used to fish Monticello. That probably be the last time I fished shore fishing and. That's about it. Anything you're working on, whether it's Z-Man or anybody else? Are you working on some baits or anything? Um, I'm working on some stuff with Rappel and BMC. Um, nothing for Z-Man yet. Um, it, it got kind of a weird time. Like, I think if COVID wouldn't have hit, there'd be a lot more of that kind of stuff coming down the sure. pipe. But there's just it's just so hard to keep up with demand and production of what's currently happening right now that... I think a lot of new product stuff's been kind of put on the way, uh, you know, set aside for the time being. What's your, what's your favorite Z-Man plastic? Um, I've probably caught more fish on a hula stick than any of them. Um, I do like the big turd a lot. I like the bang stick a lot. <laughs> um, definitely the, the streaks and the, I don't know. It's really awesome stuff for, if you're drop shotting or fishing, you know, light cover. Um, there's some stuff I don't love it for, but, um, Something if if you're fishing an exposed hook, it's awesome, and like light flipping, not super heavy cover flipping. I have some issues with it, but yeah, drop really shot, Ned rig and Nico rig and um, light Texas rig, love it for all that. Yeah, to me, like anything you don't need the hook buried, right? If you can fish an exposed hook or keep it kind of yeah. like exposed, like it gets a little weird when you're trying to like. Get yeah, through all of it, but yeah, and I throw an extra wide gap hook a lot, so that kind of yeah. bugs me out on it. But I like St. John's last year, I caught him on that bang stick, but I, I went to a straight shank hook just to have that kind of angle through the hook when you did yeah. set the hook versus having something you know laying flat on top of it. So I think you got to kind of change up um, some of the ways you fish with it, but drop shot and it's awesome, Ned Rig, and yeah. it's insane. Like if it you're stupid not to use it jig trailers things like that yeah like yeah and then speaking of st john's like do you look forward to explaining that lady like what what tournament circuit you fish again <laughs> like <laughs> that's like well, i probably won't see her I, I can never seem to catch them two years in a row in the same place it's like you gotta wait for like five years before that canal can produce again now so. yeah oh yeah 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 it'll be good in about 2024 uh so he's asking for seven rods let's talk about like if you're a co-angler, what's two things that you wouldn't leave home without? Seven's a lot. We got to keep things moving. <laughs> two things I wouldn't leave home without if I was a co-angler. So that's just like uh, I'm so like I 
Oh. Or what do you see like when you had Coes, like when you fished the opens and I don't know if I remember in your early days of the elites, like what did you see as like the most effective? I mean, a lot of it's seasonal. I would say one bait would be one bait I could cast a mile with, whether that's a trap or a big spook or something. A bait that I can like fish the other bank with or something. Sure. And yeah. then okay. something super finessey, like a Nico rig or a drop shot or a Ned rig or something. I'd I'd have one rod super finesse and try to outfit it for literally fishing behind the guy. And then I'd yep. have one rod for being able to throw to maybe the next tip of the point that he's not fishing. Just something I could reach something with, you know. Yeah, that's good. That's a little bit different. Everybody, everybody's usually like shaky head and drop shot. But you're like Well, there's I mean, you, you know, you get yeah. some of them little tighter areas and yeah. like He's just fishing over here, and there might be a dumb one over there that'll eat anything that comes by. And if you can get a spook sixty yards away from the boat and land over there, you catch them. You know. Yeah, that's good advice. That's one thing you don't hear a lot. It's just that reach out and touch somebody yeah. style. Or, you know, a one ounce football jig or something. You know, something you can spool your reel with. Nice. Do you have any insight on the Daiwa D CT SV TW seventy? <laughs> Um, I think that's the new American version of the CT. I think they made those a little more heavy duty. I love the CT I have now. And then I think they made those a little more heavy duty and they came with like an actual proper size handle on them. I had to swap the handles out on all the CTs I currently have. And then that one's also got a seven to one gear ratio, which... Um, with the little tiny spools in those, that's kind of nice because the original CT was just an eight to one and a six three to one. The six three to one was basically like a five to one because the spool's tiny. Right. Sorry if I missed your content, Sean. There's a lot of comments tonight. Uh, I'm not saying, but I'm not saying, but you might want to check codes because they're working on some things that maybe they don't usually work on at Omnia. So. Uh, <laughs> have you played around with the stealth blade at all uh i have i've just being honest i have not had a lot of success on it i've heard of some guys catching them on it um me personally it's i like the jackhammer i know it's a damn 18 dollar chatter bait but yeah if I'm, if I'm throwing one it's that and then i got to play with the the big blade this fall Caught some fish on that. That's a cool bait. Um, mm -hmm. The stealth. I, maybe I haven't been in the right scenario for the, the place. I get it definitely stays deeper, but I think I think there's something lost there with the plastic blade. Um, yeah. Maybe it's a noise thing or something. I, I could see it working good on like a clear water spotted bass fishery floating dock kind of deal. Like yeah, if you went to like a linear or something and like burned it around, like, cause you can keep that bait a lot deeper. Like mm -hmm. you could fish that bait fast down like five, six feet where like it was a jackhammer. You kind of got to really crawl it and use a light line and stuff like that. So I could see it playing there. I personally haven't had much success on it. So I'm not going to tell you yeah. it's the greatest seems, thing ever. Seems but pretty niche. Like it's almost like where you're at like a scrounger slash swim jig and you want to be just a little more noisy. Or a yeah. Little more yeah. And I could see it maybe having some luck with some small mouse. And I definitely, if I, if I was like a super clear water deal is where I think it would probably yeah. shine. Or maybe like a super insane high pressure thing where like everybody's throwing up and you just need to. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Matt wants to know if he was going to try to bribe you to take him fishing, what would be his best bet for a beverage? <laughs> uh, Probably be better off with darts, but uh, okay. <laughs> um, warm Mountain Dew or I don't know Miller High Life. I already got as much tin cup as I can drink, so we got that covered. Nice. Um, you rocked the Green Belt Elites for a while, didn't you? I did. I did. I had a little deal with them, but deep down in my heart, I've always been a more High, Miller Life, Light. High Life in a bottle. It's got don't come with a can. That's that stuff's straight trash. I don't know why it tastes so much different in a bottle, but that's the one. This is weird because you literally have a river rat from Iowa asking you about sand drops on the Mississippi River. <laughs> uh, that's a question for Cade, probably. I don't know. 
Um, in my experience, I like <laughs> I like them perpendicular to the current. I think they're better if they're too shallow. You can't go over them. So when you say when the current's actually like going over it, this yeah, way, this you see a lot of them where it's yeah. kind of like yeah, that's yeah. just that's just the bank. Like that's not a sand drop. I like current perpendicular going over it. I think they're best if you couldn't get your boat over it. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously you got to have a nice little two, three foot hole on the back side of it. And then the ones that got the small mouse on them are usually the best. Yeah. There's a lot of dead ones and I don't know. Just I, 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 found, I look for all mine on Google Earth and then just try to get to them. And I think considering the habitat that's adjacent is helpful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely can't be in like no man's land like, like what like, else is like, there to support that ecosystem yeah right? exactly they they're just like, they're little feeding shelves the fish isn't gonna live on a sand yeah. drop um but when he wants to feed it's a really good place for him favorite do you fish first question do you fish a lot of trailers on spinner baits but what are your favorite trailers chatter baits and um i, I won't fish spinner a spinner bait without a trailer okay. um for, it, there's only two trailers I'll fish on a spinner bait. One's a real skinny swim bait, um, you know, something like uh, like the not like the original Kitek, not the fat Kitek. Yeah. I don't like any sort of like bulk to it. I want it to be real thin, so it's almost mm -hmm. like a worm style body with a real subtle tail on there. Like it's, I don't, I'm not looking for a lot out of a spinner bait trailer. And then the other one's just that old school split tail like sure and I, I usually run those if i'm like fishing bottom like brush piles or trying to roll a bait on the bottom out in 10 foot or keep my bait down on the bottom i'll go with the split tail and then if i'm just regular spinner bait fishing I, i'll use the, the you know the real skinny swim baits yeah i adopted the same thing like i followed your suit on the, the compacts and yeah. just run a skinny tiny little paddle tail yeah personal, yeah like there's something about a spinner bait that blows my mind. If if you don't use a trailer, you need a trailer hook. And if you do use a trailer, you don't need a trailer hook. Hmm. Even though your bait's longer, like it makes no sense. But it's like they commit like almost yeah, like they eat it when if you, you don't have a trailer, have a trailer they're like hitting the blades and you're like hitting them on the side of their face or yeah. something. But when there's a swim bait or a then they key on the body and they eat it, right? Like something like that. There's a couple questions about your chatterbait jackhammer setup. Like, what's your rod? Is it glass? Is it what dial rod glass. is it? What's your? It's a seven four heavy action glass Tatula, regular Tatula, not the silver ones. And then uh, nine times out of ten, just a seven to one bait caster. And I mess around with line a lot. I don't. I don't go much lower than fifteen, and or much higher than twenty, but. It's 17, probably day in and day out if I was going to pick sure. one. Floral? Straight floral? Yep. yep, straight floral. I played around with mono when I was down in Louisiana around all the cypress trying to like get it to ride up and snap free more. But Yeah. Rock some, I went, went Robertson and rocked some big game. There you um, go. Oh, yeah, he loves the mono. I think it has an application for some of that super shallow stuff sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh... Do you, uh, are you a back reel or just rely on the drag kind of guy? Gary wants to know from Facebook. I used to be a back reel guy when I was using cheap spinning reels, and now all my spinning reels are unaffordable, so I just use the drag on them. <laughs> so if you can afford a $700 spinning reel, I promise you you can use the drag. But if you're running like bubble pack $50 spinning reels, you might want a back reel. That's good advice. Did you have? Did you th so Craig Plummer wanted to know: Is like a single aha moment that changed the trajectory of like your fishing success? Um, I mean, it was kind of before it became. Yeah, I mean, that could be a lot of success. Like... It was a. Uh, it was really just a mindset change, from the Potomac River to the. That lacrosse river 
Sure. Well, not Defoe on the one I actually caught him in. I think I bombed the last time we were there. But um, just, yeah, just changing how I approached her. Just uh, I approached him more like it was a like a Denny's or, a, you mm-hmm. know, like I'm going, I'm going to try to win the tournament instead of shooting for 50th place. So it was just set my goals higher and just kind of had an effort attitude and it worked, it worked, and it did. So nice. There's a couple questions. Dave and a couple other guys that grew up in Bloomington wanted to know, like, did you did you stomp around like Highland and Bush and oh, yeah. Norman? Yeah. Like, what, oh, yeah, that's where it all went down, right there. Was it like shore fishing, or did you have like a oh, little yeah. boat? Like, no, what was your shore, shore fishing? Like, my hot bait was like a weightless. It was so awful. It was like a weightless uh, power four inch power worm. <laughs> on a spinning rod, like a five six spinning rod with like twelve pound XT and like a two odd round bend worm hook. And you could throw the thing about fifteen feet on a good day with some coily ass. Yeah, that's it right there. With some coily ass old mono big game or not big game XT and sure. it was a terrible setup, but yeah, that's that's how it went down right there. That kind of reminds me on Green Lake. I was fishing a tournament, uh, the one out by Spicer, and uh, I was throwing all kinds of. And my co angler, he rigged, he had a, he used a Reaction Evasions Little Dipper, and he had it on an EWG hook, and he just threaded it on the hook like it was a jig head, yeah. but there was no jig head. And he threw it weightless, and he didn't even like rig it straight, and it was just kind of like on there, and he just threw it out there and just like. So it was almost he was really it so slow it was almost like just swing a fluke but there was a tiny yeah. I don't know and he caught yeah. like caught a big one and then like lost one next to the boat and I was just like yep well, yeah <laughs> it's like I just saw that happen and yet there's no way that I would try to duplicate that like <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> been there so which which one of those was I mean obviously they they're not the same but which one was the gem back in the day like Highland or Normandale or Bush uh, or... honestly it was Normandale. Okay. Normandale was like the first the, the lake all those lakes are equally as good but Normandale was like it's super shallow and honestly like the inside weed line is like the best place on the lake because it's sure. literally like it's all jacked up now they drained it and like mm-hmm. did a bunch of stuff to it it's absolute trash now but like the whole lake would be a solid grass mat and literally like the only open water is either the creek channel going down the middle or the inside weed line. So as far as shore fishing went, Normandale was hands down the best one. Like I could go and I'd have like 15 pounds, 17 pound days from shore when I was like 13 years old. I mean, that was like, might as well be 30 pounds to me, you know? Right. At the time. And those other lakes, I think a lot of the fish just kind of, they got away from a lot of them were kind of out deeper weed line stuff. And on the other lakes and Normandale, that was, that was the gem for bank fishing. Yeah. There's not like 4,000 kayaks back then. Like there is now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was the place to go. Let's, we'll throw it back to the Peter wants to know what's, what's your, what's your shotgun of choice? Like, are you, you have a brand or you like, uh, I'm kind of old school. I got a gun that, was my dad's and my brother shot it and his buddy shot it and it's actually in Ithaca which is kind of a not a great company but it's that particular one was made by SKB Mm -hmm. which is a Japanese company so it was like a really nice shotgun and like if you're into like the old A5s and stuff after they made them in Belgium the Japanese A5s were made out of that same SKB factory so it's really an SKB but it's got an ethical logo on it just a 20 gauge fixed choke uh it's just i don't know it shoots right point <laughs> bill suggests that you used to skip high school to go fishing absolutely <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if it was like 70 degree day in may not a chance i was in school nice no yeah. I don't know, maybe epic if, if we can't get Bateman, maybe you can come back and uh, rejoin the Hellabass stream. Um, what's the one I was going to ask here? Uh, there it is. Yeah, what's your what's where do you start flipping? 
with a jig? What do you have a like a five eighths or what is your yeah. favorite one? To... Five eighths and a, I will go to a half at times, but nine times out of ten for me, it's a five eighths for mill foil flipping. And it, so I saw like your eyes light up when we started talking about shotguns. Like, so if you could make the same kind of living hunting ducks, would you give up bass fishing? I think it would ruin it. If you turned it into a job, it would take a lot of sure. the, it would take all the fun out of it. Cause like, if you don't kill them, like whatever, no big deal. You go home. It's like fishing. Like you don't catch them. Like that's a problem, you know? Right. So I think it would ruin it for me. And I don't, I don't think I'd want to pursue that i'm not like a badass duck hunter i just really like doing it you know sure i think hunting i used to do it a little bit which i've gotten out of but i think part of the allure of the hunting is the short season right you get that it like, could be yeah. yeah you know what i mean like and you can kind of chase that season a little bit you know by going yeah. and traveling but like yeah. fishing you can kind of do all year round yeah like for the most part so i think that might be part of it right like if you could hunt 300 days a year i think it would i don't know yeah no, I probably would ruin it. So has there been any downside to winning the AOI? Things that have changed that like besides getting stuck doing like ridiculous live streams like this one, but No, I I, I got pretty jammed up on those for like I don't know, maybe a month or two. Three, yeah. yeah, maybe a month after the AOI it got a little much, but um, now it's like, hell, this is the first one I've done in, I don't know, a long time. We're, just, we're trying to get your mind right. Sorry, you get your, like, you shift back into gear here and get no, the No, you timed it right. If we would have done this, like, two weeks earlier, I would, like, not even be thinking about fishing whatsoever. So I'm kind of excited getting back in the groove and getting back into the fishing world. Yeah, Brian, I think when he said fire by plane, like, they, they, would just, they went in different ways. Like, the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The marketing guy said he didn't know what he could do with a picture of a Plano box that didn't that had Rapala baits in it. Because hmm. pure fishing bought Plano now. Ah, so. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. it was really more of like corporate strategy. Like yeah, it was either thing. like come throw Abus and Berkeley baits, and you can keep your little Plano deal, or uh, you're fired. So, yeah, it is what it is. It's the conglomerates in this industry. It's that happens a lot. I mean, that happened to like yeah. right. I mean, that's why KVD went from quantum to lose, right? I mean, oh, like, yeah, because yeah. he was striking, right? but I mean, lose. Like, it's, yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. not. I wasn't surprised. I knew it was coming. Yeah. So it's conflict of interest, basically. So, yeah. Are the Vikings gonna? I don't even know who they play. Who do they play? I don't even know who they play either. I kind of stopped caring when they lost to the Lions. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I stopped caring before that. I mean, I watch him, and I like, yeah, I'm like, I do. For I me, guess. when Favre threw across his body in the Bayou, and that season went, and I was like, I, I need to like, I need to take a step back and have a healthier relationship with being a fan after that. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, when it's on, I watch the game, but yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not looking at the uh, matchups. Any any of the events you're looking forward to, or is it just a tournament at a time? It's a derb. Like um, how do you treat the season? I think the Santee one's gonna be awesome. Like we got to go to that lake a couple years ago yeah. in the fall, and it's like everywhere down south sucks in the fall, and we still caught some pretty nice fish. So um I think we're gonna be there like right when you want to be there this time. And I know that yeah. place is just it's Definitely got a bunch of those, you know, five, six, sweet. seven, eight pound like fish. The, uh, the Preston Clark v. Aaron Martin's battle of like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm picturing when I think of it this spring. So, um, I think it could be really cool. I'm looking forward to that one. Is that so? I mean, this year <laughs> on paper looks like there could be a handful of century belts taken home by anglers. Is that something yeah. on your like bucket list that you like? You'd yeah. like to, to oh, yeah, oh, yeah, no, those are super cool. I'd really like one of those, but. Um, who wouldn't like if you said no, yeah. would that even I mean, would you like just I, quit fishing? Yeah, like... <laughs> seems like everybody that gets them doesn't care much about them either. Like, like if I got one, I would like wear it. Like, yeah, like you I know, mean, you I, know, I, I might not take it off. Robertson would just month. wear it. Like, 
to go to Denny's and just like exactly. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or Waffle House, right? He just yeah. be like, no, like I, I, apparently we play the Bears on Monday night. Is what people are saying. Okay, we should be able to beat them, but you would think we'd be able to beat the Lions too. It's true. The Wild is the Minnesota team to watch right now if you're into hockey. Are they? They're like the best team in the league. They got the best. Record are they the really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gave up on them when they became the Dallas Stars. That was a long time ago. You got, I don't know, you got any AMART stories or interactions, anything that? Um, Hopefully only positive, maybe just. No, everything's definitely (laughs) positive. Yeah. A couple I can't tell, but no, I was a super awesome guy. Sad to see him go. That's that's not a, I mean, (laughs) the sport was better with him for sure. Oh, Um, yeah. Favorite Minnesota tournament trail series, and maybe I don't know, maybe past or present. Like you don't really fish them now, but like what was I mean? Was like the Silverado back in the day, the Denny's. Like what was your favorite circuit ever? It was the Denny's for sure. Silverado was really cool, or Minnesota Pro Am, or whatever the hell it ended up being. But went through a lot of name changes, but the Denny's is that's where my heart is. It's the one I put the most time and effort into, and I think. I oh, really enjoyed the weekend good. series when we had the weekend series. Yeah, I was like, those were those were cool. my some of my favorite tournaments that I fished. But yeah, even though Seth usually beat me, but whatever. Uh, do you like great biscuits and gravy? Yeah, uh, I mean they're good. It's not usually my go-to, but um, I do enjoy a good biscuits and gravy. I don't like like sweet breakfast like i'm not big on the pancakes and french toast stuff so i usually get a corned beef hash or country fried steak or something nice so what yeah uh why is bass fishing predominantly southeast it's economics it's uh it's partly where most of the bass anglers are and it's also where the tournament organizations are headquartered so it's a cost of operating and it's where the the consumers are yeah yeah these guys complaining about california they these guys on the internet like just moan about a, like big tournaments never going out to california and then when they do they like don't show up like they had yeah, some I mean, what the heck was that they had out there this year it was on clear lake or it was, it was like a most i think it was maybe a toyota there's like 40 boats fished it and then we went out there fish the cal delta coolest one of the coolest fishers i've ever been to like would go back there in a heartbeat. There's like 13 people in the stands for us to weigh in, and you got like I don't know if it's the same 13 people that whine about us. And <laughs> Is that the one that was out California. of California? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. From the from the sounds of it, when they had the weigh-ins, like where you guys actually ended up fishing. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like when it because you guys had to drive 40 miles to like. Oh fish, yeah. Right. Oh, like, more than that. Yeah. I hear stories that like there was really big crowds on those Delta tournaments okay. back in the day, but yeah, Sacramento evidently is, you know, a little too hipsterish and nobody wants to, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And everything's like super expensive out there and you got to cross a border. Like, like California has a border on it. Like yeah, there's like weird country. taxes for like too many axles on your rigs. Yeah. And, and like, we got just... to the lake and they brought, uh, zebra muscle sniffing like drug dogs and like walked them <laughs> around all our boats and trucks before we could put them in the water. It's just like a huge pain in the butt. That, sniffing it's, dogs don't make you nervous, do they, Seth? No. <laughs> 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 and it's like two days from everywhere and like everything's like, I don't even know what gas is there right now, but it was like five something a gallon when we were there. It's just nobody makes any money except like one guy who won the tournament. Like the yeah. organization lost money, every angler there lost money. I mean, I love the fisheries out there, but it's just it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe once every five years, right? Like other than that, it's maybe really not sustainable. <laughs> I think I think you'd have to do a back to back for sure, if not yeah. a back to back to back to make it make any sort of sense. Which which is a little bit of a shame because if we really want to see bass fishing to get on the level of like even start to get close to, you know, other major sports. Yeah. Like you kind of need to do nationwide and, but that means oh, the, for sure. there's gotta be fan base for it. So it just, it kind of just shows that we're not there yet. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's still a huge gap even between like soccer <laughs> and oh, bass yeah. fishing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like Yeah. And there's a lot of good fishermen that come out of there, but yeah. I don't I don't know. Sure. But like Jared Lindner just moved to Georgia, right? Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, I mean the money is just all jacked up out there. Well, dude, I think we covered it. Like the chat has slowed down, so I feel like we've got most of their questions. We're creeping on two hours. I got to use the restroom here a little bit, so I think we'll give it like five more minutes here and wrap things up. But uh, okay. um, I guess here's a fun question: Like, what's one thing or one or two things if somebody goes out and fills their Omnia wish list? What would Seth make sure was on his Omnia wish list? I sound like a salesman. I'd have, I'd have a bunch of stealth fighters and a bunch of jackhammers and uh probably what's maybe like a non-obvious one a sneaky one that's like a um like a z-man one like a low-key like not a super popular z-man or like a I mean, is there? I don't know. Is I don't it, know. Bang stick? I don't know. Bang like, stick? Yeah, I'm into those. <laughs> Big turds, hula sticks. Uh, their soft, their soft plastic jerk bait is killer on a drop shot. Sure. They make three inch, four inch, five inch streaks. I think they're called. Um, super good drop shot bait. Um, yeah, I just kind of really got back into just keeping everything so basic. I don't. Chris says OG Slim would be a good one. Yeah, OG Slim if they got any. Um, I think those are pretty hard to come by right now, but um, real good flat side bait. Yeah. I threw it a little bit late in the year, and I wish I would have threw it more for sure. Yeah. And the thing I'm learning more about, the, like, the, the flat side is not just a cold water. Like, that thing catches them year-round. Like, I don't really even see the need to really fish, like, a – square bill much anymore unless like super heavy cover right maybe yeah uh, so i'm a fan of the uh the ring tooks I took that yeah. cue from you fished them my landing percentage went way up like what's your theory is there any a team you wouldn't use it and what's your why do you think it catches them i don't know i just noticed like where the fish were hooked and how hard it was to get the hook out like that that hook hooks them deeper than any other hook I've ever used. And it's not because the fish has the bait any further in his mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, like straight shanks or regular EWGs or you know, round bends, you just seem like always oh, like lip hook fish and like that ring DWG. I don't know if it just cause it takes like the path of least resistance. I feel like like a straight shank is just gonna like shoot out and scrape and rip and finally catch on the lip and i that thing like i don't know this sounds kind of really bad but like there's like a really nice chunk of like soft meat like kind of close right. to where their eyes are not yep. like it like that top of that roof back there and that just seems to be where that hook always sticks them i don't know why i don't know the reason the scientific reason behind it but like i I can't think of a single time I've needed a pair of pliers to get a fish off a straight shank hook. Like not one time in my life. And there's a lot of like, there's a lot of times you need them to get that ringed hook out. Yeah. And then like in my eyes, that's just that much harder for them to come off. Deeper penetration is always good. Says yeah. Jesse. So, um, yeah. So when do you, I mean, do you got to usually head down like a little bit ahead of time, right? To get warmed yeah. up in Florida. When are you going to head down to, I'm going to go down a week before practice starts. So I don't know if I'll have the old boat or the new boat. If I got the new boat, I'll have to make sure everything works and set up uh, graphs and run live wells and just make sure everything works. And then just fish for a week too, you know, just I haven't made a cast in a couple months. So knock some rust off and get back into it. All right. Since Sobe finally finished his little like ice fishing thing on clam. He wants to know plain tube versus craw tube. Like, um, why do you pick one or the other? The only time I use the craw tube is in the MILF. Um, and I fish a plain tube on like lay downs, bushes, okay. 
docks. Um, in my eyes, a crow tube is a soft plastic jig. Okay. I think it has the bulk and the fall of a jig, um, but you can fish a lot better through the grass. And then when I'm fishing, like, laydowns, bushes, docks, I do kind of like a true tube that has kind of that little squirrely Dark. fall yeah. and all of that to yeah. it where a craw, a craw tube falls just like a jig just straight like a rock to the bottom it's bulky in my eyes it's a soft plastic jig if that makes any craw sense tubes in the grass hard covers regular tube yeah nice that's a good one let's let's uh so thanks everybody for tuning out i'm pretty sure we hit like 200 on youtube alone and i don't know like well above that with youtube or with facebook so that's awesome if you guys came in late make sure you catch the replay i saw a bunch of repeat questions that we definitely covered early on uh you can catch the replay here on facebook you can uh catch the podcast version just search hella bass in a podcast app and uh i don't know what else to say but thanks for coming on seth and uh yeah, go out and kill it again sure, dude. Yep, you can tell there's a ton of people pulling for you so uh, oh, i appreciate it but uh, until uh, next time, uh, thanks, everybody. And as always, here to help you guys catch more big bass and suck less. Oh, yeah. See you, boys. <laughs>